Hello. Um, wow, there's so many of you here. Um, I'm really excited to be here today to talk about how big commerce is building the future of e performant e-commerce with Next.js. My name is Katie, and I'm a senior developer advocate at Big Commerce. And if you're not familiar with Big Commerce, we're a SaaS e-commerce platform, and we're the engine that powers tens of thousands of e-commerce storefronts, including some of your favorite brands. So why is Big Commerce here at NextConf? Um, good question. So first and foremost, we know that great developer experience drives the best shopper and brand experience as possible. Over the past few years, as we've catered more and more to larger enterprise-sized brands, we've learned a lot about their needs for composable, scalable options for e-commerce storefronts. In response to those needs, we were the first SaaS e-commerce platform to jump onto Next.js Commerce four years ago. Um, and in case you didn't know, Next.js Commerce is a Next.js 13 Plus, an app router-ready headless storefront template that helps developers quickly spin up e-commerce storefronts in minutes with big commerce for sale in Next.js. We've been using Next.js to build and provide headless storefront capabilities for our retailers who weren't finding the right solutions anywhere else. So our brands love Next.js. So this is just one example. This is level nine. And this uh, storefront was built by Mira Commerce, which is a big commerce agency that builds dozens of big commerce storefronts. Um, and their story, level nines, is similar to that of many other retailers that we've had migrate to Next.js. Um, they saw a revenue increase of over 200%, a conversion rate increase of over 75%, and this isn't on the slide, but their bounce rate was reduced by 45%. Um, and this is just one example and a pretty uh, good one, uh, but this example does illustrate what we've seen to be true across many, many, many storefronts, and that's that using Next.js and Next.js Commerce equals really big wins for brands and developers alike. So as a developer advocate, and if any of you are DevRels here, you'll, you'll relate to this, I spend a lot of my time talking to developers about their problems, about building storefronts, about apps and integrations for our platform. Um, and what we've built with Next.js and Next.js Commerce is a really great jumping off point for those developers who are building headless e-commerce storefronts. Um, working with these developers and dogfooding our own solutions has allowed us to understand some of the common gaps and limitations that those developers had with our current offering. Um, many of the developers building on BigCommerce build storefronts for numerous retailers, and they run into the same barriers over and over again. So again, as a dev advocate, I view our platform and our developer tools through the lens of the developers who are using them. So I'm really stoked to be here today to talk about what we're working on right now to fill in some of those gaps. But first, let's talk a little bit about the problems that we've identified. So the first problem is that everybody wants their site ready faster. For any of you who have tried, you know that it's really hard to build a well-architected headless storefront starting from scratch. Uh, we know that developers want standardized, reusable components and a higher jumping off point. Imagine yourselves in the shoes of the e-commerce agencies we work with who develop tens, hundreds, thousands of e-commerce storefronts every year. The ability to standardize a set of components that they could reuse across builds would save them a ton of time. And many brands that they work with have very similar needs. So that leaves agency developers to rebuild the same functionality over and over and over without the native capability to reuse those components. The second problem is that GraphQL is hard. Um, it's complicated to integrate a Next.js site with an e-commerce provider like BigCommerce. Um, first, there is a really steep learning curve when it comes to working with new GraphQL APIs. And schemas can be intimidating, and it can take a while to learn how to write the right queries. Lots of developers who build on our platform are interacting with numerous incredibly complex GraphQL APIs on a regular basis, and they wish that there was a way to reduce that complexity. Second is that data fetching using best practices can make or break a site's performance, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, and we know that well-cached sites equal less work on the server, but we also know that that's just not always how things are done. Developers building headless big commerce storefronts run into rate limit issues, and that's a problem for all developers. Um, and we've talked to merchants who have run into problems composing GraphQL queries that have sometimes resulted in sending up to six times the number of GraphQL requests for every single page request that they send. Um, rate limits are an issue for all developers, like I said, but in e-commerce, consider just how important that can be during times like flash sales, Black Friday, and other major shopping events throughout the year. Maybe some of you developers can relate to this one, but the third problem is that nobody likes being told what to do. Um, composability is the buzzword of the year, of the years, but really achieving it can either be a huge lift or it can feel really, really clunky. 
Um, enterprise merchants want to be able to use the solutions that they already have today and integrate those seamlessly with headless storefronts. We know that there is no one right way to build things, and developers and brands have preferences, but often you're given a really prescriptive approach to follow that you don't want to. Enterprise brands and brands of any size often have existing integrations and apps, and they want them to work seamlessly with the rest of their e-commerce stack. And agencies who build e-commerce storefronts want to be able to leverage the tools that they have, or want to leverage the tools that they want when they want to, but it's just not always an option. So what's next? After hearing about and seeing some of these limitations that developers have been running into, we got to thinking, how do we build the best possible solutions for developers and brands who need feature-rich, composable, and flexible e-commerce capabilities? Like I've mentioned, we've invested in Next.js solutions for over four years at Big Commerce. We've built our own core apps, we've built our control panel, we've built our corporate website, all with Next, and we've also witnessed firsthand their true commitment to developer experience. Um, and combining that with our decades-long experience in e-commerce, we knew that Next.js was the clear choice for us while we plan and build for the future of e-commerce developer and brand needs. Next is not only part of Big Commerce's DNA, but it is the best solution for our largest customers with the most complex needs who really want control over their own destiny. So I've stirred up a bunch of problems here, and now I want to pull on a software engineer from Big Commerce, Matt Volk, who is on our headless team at Big Commerce, which is working to build a set of tools on top of Next.js to enable our headless storefront developers to build Next.js storefronts faster and with less friction. So I'll bring out Matt, give it up for Matt. So I think we could probably all agree that Next.js has transformed the way that we build for the web. It gave us a framework that enabled us to spend less time writing boilerplate and spend more time shipping features to users. That concept is our core principle on the headless team at Big Commerce, to enable developers to spend less time standing up storefronts and spend more time on the most important part of their jobs shipping beautiful e-commerce experiences for their brands. With the release of the app router, solutions for the problems Katie mentioned around data fetching, cash management, and time to launch were suddenly baked into the framework that our community already loved. And because Next.js solved these problems at the framework level, we had more time to think about the tools that we could build on top of it. Tools like UI patterns and platform integrations that could serve to accelerate the time it takes to build a headless storefront. While the app router laid the foundations of the UI patterns that we'd been looking for, we also wanted to provide a library of e-commerce components, like product cards and slideshows, that developers could leverage in place of building them on their own. Now, publishing component libraries is not a new concept, but we had introduced a bit of a unique requirement the components that we publish would need to be fully customizable in a way that would allow a developer to perfectly match them to their brand. Coincidentally, around the time we started working on this library, Shad CN introduced a new take on a proven pattern for sharing React components. Shad's components were built with close attention to accessibility and best practices, but also gave you the source code to copy into your project which meant code ownership free from some of the limitations of asso commonly associated with library abstractions. We've taken a lot of inspiration from the patterns put into practice by Shad CN and started to wonder if we could share components that catered to e-commerce but stayed true to Shad's core principles. While the components we built are still very much a work in progress, we're excited to see them start to take shape. The app router also gave us a number of new paradigms around data fetching and caching. The ability to fetch or mutate the data that a component needed to render from within that component itself meant one less click handler, one less API route, and a lot less global state. It's true, by the way. We wanted to take these paradigms and build on top of them to provide a cache-enabled API client that also lowered the barrier to entry of writing GraphQL queries from scratch. Our client abstracts our most commonly used queries 
into human readable method names that aim to help avoid GraphQL complexity limits. And combined with the ability that Next.js 13 gives you to control the cache of the resource you're requesting, we're finding ourselves running into API rate limits much less frequently. If the underlying data changes by actions such as adding a new item to the shopper's cart, UI updates can be triggered by simply revalidating the cache for the resource that was mutated. This is the experience that our developers have been asking for. Less time spent dealing with things like state management, but more confidence that their sites can scale with a higher tolerance for failure. Now, being able to fetch data with an intuitive API client and then feed that data into the e-commerce components provided by our library, we're finding that we're able to scaffold e-commerce pages faster than we've ever been able to. And ultimately, the natively performant feature set of Next.js 13, combined with our set of tools optimized for e-commerce storefront development, are forming the ingredients that we needed to offer a framework for creating storefronts, a framework that serves as a catalyst for headless e-commerce development. While we plan to open source these tools soon, we're not quite there yet. But with that said, we didn't want to leave you without anything to take away. The time and place feels right for us to invite you over to the Big Commerce booth to come chat with us so we can add you to an early access preview of these tools before they're released. We feel confident that we're on the right track, but we know our tools are only as strong as they are enjoyed by our community. So come chat with us if you have a chance, and thank you for your time. <laughs>